You film and Bruce Willis and Tracy Morgan called a couple of dicks. Yeah. The man has written for both Marvel and DC Comics, yeah. appeared in many films and TV shows, and is now solidly established as a pop culture and cinematic visionary, which is really not bad for a comic book dude from Red Bank with a camera, some friends, and a whole lot of dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Kevin Smith. of New York was the first section of New York that any Smith planted a flag on and said, we've come to New York, and people went, back to Jersey, in fact. <laughs> uh, I went to school at New School for Social Research, and I, Woo! and I wrote that. Yeah. That's a little bit <laughs> Um, so I roomed. I was just like right across the street. I mean, where are we? What street is this? Where's uh, 17th Street? 17th Street. I think I was on 12, Union 12, Union Square West. Union Square is gone. That building is gone now. That building's gone? Yeah. Well, yeah. good, because I never got laid there once. <laughs> Scorch the goddamn earth. Raise it to the ground. Burn it like a Sherman's march to Atlanta. <laughs> school, lived over there and shit. They asked me politely to leave the school because I was throwing water balloons at the 8th store window. Because I lived on a one-story ranch house in Jersey, so we didn't, you know, I didn't discover gravity until I came here. <laughs> I was throwing shit out the window with other people, water balloons, and we were having a good time, and then all of a sudden, people started getting bored, and I was still like, why? <laughs> Look how it goes! It's the mounds of hits and shit. And the NYU dorm was right across from us, so people would be coming out, we'd duck below the window. <laughs> and just listen for <laughs> you know. So uh, I guess somebody over at the NYU dorm saw the activity coming from our, our window. And we were in a suite. It was me and five other guys, as you do in New York. And uh, <laughs> the RA was coming up our way. Somebody was like, "Chicky, chicky, the RA's coming." I was like, "Oh fuck." Everyone scrambled. People went into their other into their rooms within our little suite and shit. And I was just like, "That just looks guilty." I'm going to sit here, <laughs> right by the open window, and do homework, you know? This dude comes in, I'm the only one in the kitchen, reading my book, writing shit down. He's like, what's going on? And I was like, what do you mean? And he's just like, what? somebody's throwing shit out the window. And I was like, no, they're not. There's a whole puddle. <laughs> just sitting to the window. Empty fun time balloon bags. <laughs> He's like, somebody said, who was it? When he saw him, they pointed to this window. I went outside and looked up, and it was this fucking window. And it kind of looked like you, Kevin. I was like, dude, I'm sitting here. Why the fuck would I sit here if I was just throwing water balloons out the window? It makes no sense. And he was just like, well, that's kind of already maybe just trying to outthink me. And I was like, well, I'm not that clever. <laughs> and so he couldn't prove it, but I got a letter um, to my dorm room, uh, which was fine. But then I went home for the weekend. You know, I know the far from here like 50 minutes or something like that, I go home, and my parents are like, sit down. I sit down, they're like, why in God's name are you throwing water out windows in New York? And I was like, what are you talking about? Where'd you hear that? That's not true. They produced a letter. The school had written a fucking letter to my parents, man. I'm like, I'm 18. You don't write a letter to my parents. I'm practically fucking adult. I'm up there trying to have same-sex gender fucking experiences, man. I'm in college. Wacky and weird, and you tell my parents to throw a water balloon out the window? My parents are like, look, and they gave me this letter, and it said, like, we've heard that Kevin and some of his dorm mates uh, plan to repeat the activity on the last day of the school year. This is our way of telling you that if one drop of water hits the ground that's not rain on that day, we're going to assume it's Kevin, turn him over to the Manhattan authorities. And my parents are like, you should move out of that school right now. <laughs> so that was when I left in shame in Union Square. Next time I came back to Union Square was to this building. I don't think it looked like this, though. There's a friend of mine, John Pearson, had written a book called Spike, Mike, Slackers, and Dykes. And it came out in, like, late 95, 
early 96. And right before it came out, a guy, John Pearson is an indie sales rep who had been involved with like a lot of first time filmmakers back in the day. He sold Richard Linklater's first film. He sold my first film. He sold Michael Moore's first film, Roger and me. Uh, a bunch of other people. So John had written a book about his 10 years in the in, in indie movement. It's available here as well. It's a really great book. Um, and Michael and I, since we worked with him and figured prominently in the book, he asked us to come speak with him. And this was just after Mallrats tanked and Canadian Bacon tanked harder. So, and both had been Gramercy pictures, right? So, um, Pearson picks us up in a car and we go out to grab something to eat and it's me and Pearson and Michael Moore. And you know, I'd known Michael Moore from Roger and me and stuff, but I'd never, meet, I'd never met him before. And the two of us were just kindred spirits in utter failure and loserdom that night. You know? <laughs> just driving around going like, how much did you think yours was going to make? <laughs> uh, yeah, I was hoping for 20, 25. I was like, yeah, I know that. <laughs> I was like, I tell you, Mike, I would have sucked a dick to get it to 15. <laughs> and he was just like, <laughs> So we're driving here just talking about like, he, it was weird. He was very... He was, he was really even more sad than me. I was too young to be that sad. He was just like, he felt like he was done. He was like, they used to like me, they don't like me anymore, man. They didn't go see the movie. I fucked up, it's over. Um, and we were kept trying to cheer him up, going, no, dude, you're, you're funny and shit like that. He'll, he'll be back, don't worry about it. And I'm like, why don't you say nice things to me? My movie tag, too. <laughs> but you know, Michael, he's a little self-involved. So, uh, <laughs> so we come here and we get out and we go to, you know, it wasn't, I don't think it was this floor, I mean, but it was many years ago, so it could have been. Come into the building and we come into a room that kind of looks like this. There's a bunch of people there. We didn't know what to expect. Nobody knew what kind of crowd John's book would draw. So we're going up to like the side aisle, kind of like I did, and people spot Michael Moore, who had done at that point TV Nation, which hadn't been around anymore, and Roger and me and stuff like that, and then the ill-fated Canadian Bacon. They spot that motherfucker, and it was like Christ coming into Jerusalem. <laughs> they were, he was on a fucking ass, which was kind of me at that point. And people were just like waving palm at him and shit like that. And it was astounding, because I watched, I, I watched a person totally transubstantiate from one form to another and shit. Because as soon as that wave hit him, and it was when he was really, he, he came in and people were doing this, and then they were doing the talk up and shit, and they introduced um, me, and then people were some polite applause and shit for the four people who knew who I was. <laughs> they introduced Michael, and it was just like, wow! And I was staring at Michael's face, the guy who I just spent like the last two hours with, it was just like, sometimes, Kev, I just want to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> to all of a sudden, this dude just went from like that, to, and I, it was weird, it was like spider sense, like how Sam Raimi did spider sense and shit. Everything slowed down, and I just watched Michael Moore go, here's the wave of people screaming. <laughs> He was just like, oh, I'm not done. Act fucking two, you know? <laughs> and he took control of the mic and he fucking worked the room and shit. And Pearson's going, I thought we were here to talk about my book. And Michael's like, shut the fuck up. We gotta go after the man. <laughs> and then not even a year later, he published his first book, which became like a huge fucking bestseller. So I go around telling people like, it's kind of because of me, because he wrote that book. <laughs> and then I go like, tell them that story, and they go, it doesn't sound like you had any hand in it whatsoever. <laughs> and then I got to remember to retell the story differently, so I, I play more of a fucking role in it. But, um, but this is kind of cool, coming back third time's a charm, man. Like, I think I, I think I finally succeeded in Union Square to some degree. I'm not being thrown out. Thrown out. Yeah. <laughs> Four people know who I am today, so this is pretty sweet. So let's uh, we'll do a little chit chat, and then I guess we'll start signing signing books. Although I'd rather talk. Who would rather just listen than have books signed? Who wants their books signed? Bricks. All right, let's just chat to some people. Just right there, blue cap. Yell it out. Just yell it out.